everybody. Welcome back to the Stadium Journey podcast, and thanks for joining us. Uh, remember, check out the website, stadiumjourney.com. We are the world leader in sports travel information. We've got reviews of over 2,500 stadiums, ballparks, rinks, gyms from all over the world. I don't know what they call a cricket stadium, but, you know, we have cricket stadiums. So cricket stadiums. Grounds. Yes, grounds. That's the word. Thank you, Mark. Uh, social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, threads, and probably even more. Uh, we're easy to find at Stadium Journey. Like, share, follow, right? To find uh, episodes of the Stadium Journey podcast, you, you listen to this one, you love it, you want more of it, um, just go to HIAC Talk Radio Network, wherever you look for your favorite podcast, we'll be there too. If you would rather watch the podcast, go to Stadium Journey's YouTube page, Stadium Journey. Mm -hmm. If you want to be part of our studio audience as we're recording live, as our friend Gregory has just joined us, um, you can join us every other Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern across Dan's social media empire. He'll, uh, he'll give you directions in a second. So let me take a second before we begin and introduce everybody. Dave Cotney's here. You can follow him online at ProFan9. Mark Viquez is online at Ballpark Hunter. The above average comedian. I almost stumbled over those words. All above right. average comedian. I've only uh, done announced like 28 games this month. So yeah, my, happens, my voice yeah. is just fine. Dan Calachico's here. Follow him at DanLaw83. And I'm Paul Baker. You can follow me at Puckman RI. All right. So again, this is the Stadium Journey podcast. So obviously, everybody here on our panel are very proud of our journeys. And we boast visit numbers that, you know, a lot of people would think are pretty impressive. For example, I've been to 211 ballparks. Dave, how about you? What's your number? Uh, ballparks, 89. Mark, what's your what's your body count for ballparks? I think I, I, think I was at uh, 376. All right, so, you know, those are pretty good numbers for all of us. But our guest today, he puts us all to shame. Yeah. He's got more ballparks visited than all three of us put together. Oh, yeah. there's, in there's... fact, he's closing in on 800 ballparks. Jeez. So Joe Robertson has come to our little podcast to discuss his travels with us. Joe, welcome, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So, uh, all right, Joe, so for the record, what is your ballpark count at right now? Right now we're at seven seven five. Seven, seven. And what does that include? That includes uh, college level, D one, D two, D three, college summer, wooden bat, all up the major league. Wow. Wow. So right now I, I believe I figured I've got eighty six more D one ballparks to visit, and I'll be done with the D ones. Wow. How many are in D one? Like three hundred and one, I think it is. Right. Right. Hey, look at that. About 300. So I'm going to be going ways. I don't want to take that. So, so Joe, what, make, what makes an otherwise safe, sane man, and I say this because you and I have met on the road a few times, uh, our paths have crossed. What makes an otherwise sane man decide, you know what? I'm going to go to every single ballpark in the whole wide world. <laughs> it's a good question. You know, I think everybody starts by having their father take them to a, a couple ballparks. Not mine. You know, you go to a couple more, and then you learn about people going to all the major league parks. I think that's where everybody starts. And once you get that, those 30 done, you don't want to quit. You go to the minors, you go to the spring training sites, and then you, you find out there's college summer, there's independence, there's, you know, many minor leagues. You know, who, who, I never knew. I knew there were a lot of minor league teams, but I never knew how many at the time I started there were like 100. <laughs> The 159, let's say, because they share the ballpark there in Florida. And, uh, you know, once you start, it's like a, a jigsaw puzzle together. You want to get it put together and keep on going. They, they've got a term for people like you you and me and, and actually himself and Mark. Calls us completionists. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of OCD like Sheldon Cooper, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah I, I'm telling you this year, I've only been to one new ballpark this year. I've been to a, a multiple, but uh, it, it's this year is going to be low on my ballpark count for the first time in 21 years, and it's freaking me out. So any kind of advice or support, I appreciate it, Joe. <laughs> well, you know, um, it, it, it's kind of interesting because everybody's got a different plan. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I think some of them like to get their state done. I've talked to other chasers. Uh, Ronnie Niesel is a, a chaser out of Michigan, him and his son. And he, he's a big Tigers fan. 
So he did it a little different than I did. He wanted to see his Tigers play in every visiting ballpark. Mm -hmm. And it took, I don't know, 18 years or something to do. And he missed a game, I believe it was in Houston, between him and the Tigers. And it took him another 12 years to complete that till they, you know, till they went back or something. Or maybe it wasn't Houston, maybe it was another one. But, uh, you know, before that was the interleague that he had to finish before they made it back there and he could get there. So Yeah. So where let's let's uh let's get into some of the technicalities here. So what I want to know what counts and what ca- doesn't count. So is there a line that you draw where it's like, okay, you know, I know I went and saw my nephew play T ball last week. <laughs> that just doesn't count. <laughs> well, I, I would not count that, but there are some people that do, you know, it's just <laughs> I mean, it's a worn out phrase in, in the ballpark chaser, your chase, your rules. And I almost kind of get tired of hearing it because people refer to it so much. So whenever somebody asks me, I just give my opinion, you know, should I count a tour? And I say, I vote no, because a tour is not seeing a game, even though you really do see the ballpark. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree with you there, but yeah, everybody does their chase differently. Everybody's goals are different. So, um, so you said you you're doing you've done or you're including all the major all professional levels, correct? And all college levels D one D two D three and all the summer wood bat leagues, right? And then you know I even did some uh, community college, some NAIA because it's yep. it's college. You know, the, um, my explanation for going to a D two or D three game is okay. You have different levels of minor league, triple A, double A, single A. And college is the same. So do you have any that you would double up, like let's say that a, a park that would have a, a minor league team and a college team? Would that count as Camp, two different Like Campanelli you, Stadium, or? perhaps? I have not done that yet, but I'm not going to rule that out. You know, I, I, in fact, I made a list, and I think there's pretty close to 30 college ballparks that share those either with a minor league team or a college summer team, or an independent team. So, you know, my uh, my goal right now is is one and done. You know, I, I'm, I'm out in both. Not necessarily. Yeah, I'm with you there, too. Uh, all right, so when people find out, Joe, that you're such a prolific ballpark chaser, what's the first question that that always comes to you? Everybody wants to know what's your favorite. And it's it's like, you know, who's your favorite relative? Who's your favorite kid? You know, you, you find something unique and different about every place you go to. But I think, I think I'm going to say now that I always say Fenway and Wrigley are my favorites. I think I'm going to narrow it down now to Fenway only because I was there three different times. The first time with my brother, who's a year older. The second time with my son. And then the second time with my daughter. And finally, that time they sang Sweet Caroline and it just gave me goosebumps. It was like tremendous. Um, I guess tell us uh, tell us a few more highlights, uh, some of your favorites from here. Have you, uh, actually, before we get to that, have you seen a ballpark in, uh, in every state? I've got Alaska and Hawaii yet to hit. That's the only two I'm missing right now. And I guess the Midnight Sun game and University of Hawaii would, would take care of that as soon as I <laughs> make those plans. Nice. So, uh, so yeah, share with us some, some of your other highlights, some of your favorites, maybe, um, you know, a favorite minor league, a favorite college and so forth. Uh, as far as college goes, I would have to say all the SEC schools got a rate up there really high. It's, it's like going to your rich uncle's house, you know, they're, the ballparks are so unique and first class and um, the Big 12, again, very nice ballparks in the ACC. Um, maybe you watch it. they're going to with they're going to take your Big 10 card away. <laughs> it's funny you say that <laughs> in 2021, it was the first year after COVID. And I made a, a trip in February and I started out going to Wake Forest. And every state, every city, every, every county had different rules as far as opening up the stadium to who they were going to let in. And I get to Wake Forest, and they said, well, you have to be on the players' uh, uh, list, family members and whatnot. And I said, oh, 
she says, are you a scout? And I said, well, yes, I am. Wink, wink. And um, she says, what, what league are you with? And I says, well, I'm with the, the Great Lakes uh, Summer Collegiate League. And that's the one I knew was closest to my house. They used to have a team about 10, 12 miles away. So I used that and I got in, not to get in free, but to just get in because I was already there. And I've been that same line about 40, 50 times that summer. And I, I started wearing my uh, uh, Chief Wahoo hat. And I also had a, a membership card from the Baseball Hall of Fame. They had a uh, Chief Wahoo look on there. So that was my scouts card. And whenever they would ask for it, I would pull that card out and they'd look at it and say, okay, here's your ticket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when it works, why not keep doing it? You know, and, and there were times where they gave me a ticket for free and many times where I paid for it. But I think the best one was in um, uh, down in Miami, in Florida. Uh, what is it, Alex Rodriguez Field, whatnot. And the guy had a clipboard, says, uh, uh, what team you with? He looked at my hat, he said, oh, Indians. I said, yes. So he puts a check mark next to his clipboard and he says, uh, go over there and get your ticket. Well, the ticket I got said MLB Scout on it. So that was a keeper. And, you know, again, I didn't do it to get in free. I just didn't want to go through the hassle of saying, well, we're sorry, but we can't let you in. Yeah. After I, the uh, University of Miami sees this podcast, you're going to probably get a letter and a bill from them now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there was a time, I was about 35 years old, and I I was at uh, Zebulon in North Carolina, the uh, Mudcats, and I I didn't want to wait in line because there was a bunch of camp. So I walked to the other side of the stadium. There was a door that was open. So I walked in and every, all the interns, they're probably like 18, 19, 20. They saw me. I had a bag on me. They just let me walk in. Nobody said anything. They just said, oh, he probably works for the team. And, and that's when I realized I was an old guy. I was this old man walking in. Exactly. Everybody thought I was with the team. So that gave me the idea. If I could do it here, I could do it elsewhere. So sometimes well, I, I get it. What what Great Lakes team uh, did you get in? Um, it was well, they were called the Galleon Graders. Oh yeah, um, Galleon, Ohio, and they no longer have a team. Yeah, but um, I went so far as to ask a scout at a game. I I noticed he had a big World Series ring, so I talked to him. I said, "Hey, let me ask you." I says, uh, "When they let you in free at a college game." They don't charge the organization for that because I, I didn't want to, you know, a uh, bullet being put out on me. So uh, he says, no, no, they just do that as a courtesy because you're scouting their players. And I said, oh, good. Now I don't feel so bad. Yeah, then, so, then, yeah, then, then you try to get some free food and drink and then they'll. Uh, well, <laughs> I told my wife, I says, you know, they, they, they told me where the scouts sit and I did not go there because I didn't want to be discovered. And I didn't really fit the uh, the typical um, scout because they were mostly younger. They wore khakis. They had clipboards, speed guns, stopwatches, and I was in shorts and in a, a t-shirt. So you know, I didn't really fit the bill. Yeah, you were like the guy in Trouble with the Curve. You were Clint Eastwood's yeah. character. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. I would fit that that group of guys a lot more. Well, uh, well, speak this. Uh, one more question about the Great Lakes League. Have you been to Salina, Ohio, to the Mariner yeah. games? Have yes, you I had have. the Mariner sauce? Have I had what now? Mariner sauce. They're known for this crazy no, kind of food. You know, I've I've not been very uh, diligent about trying, you know, the ballpark food of the okay. area like that. A lot of people love doing that, and you know, I've never really got right. Yeah. Well, no, I was just saying, when, when I went to Grand Lakes, it was this nice little town along the lake, great ballpark, beer garden, nice beer specials, cheap food, cheap products. It really changed the way I felt about the Great Lakes League, because I was like, yeah, that league is is a joke. And they, them and Lima, the Cincinnati Steam, uh, they really changed my mind on uh, right. you know, how to enjoy a baseball steam. It doesn't have to be 5,000 people it could be a nice 500 seat park and highly you know, enjoyable they're down to about seven teams now yeah seven teams only two michigan teams and the five from ohio and it's you know kind of like the pecos league they just 
keep changing every year and getting new teams yeah. adding, subtracting, and yeah, and, and you know it, it's weird because we had a team in Richmond, and they they're taking a year off. The team in Muskegon is nice, but they're a little bit out of the way. Royal Oak joined the Northwoods League, so you know I hope they can I hope they can pick up a few more teams because you, you want to see these leagues survive because you know whenever you can take a ballpark and, and transform it into some summer entertainment. I think that's a win-win for everybody. And, and like I, I said, I'm at the point where any ballpark is fine with me. Just, you know, make sure you make it worth my time out there. And I think a lot of those teams do that in the in the Great Lakes League. Yeah. I think there's one in Michigan now. I can't remember the – but they've uh, uh, this year relocated to a D3 uh, ballpark, which, you know, there's a lot of nice D3 parks no. out there. Well, what state in Michigan. Yeah, no, right. especially Michigan. Yeah. Yes. Now, where, where are you located again, Joe? I'm in uh, Mansfield, Ohio, exactly between Cleveland and Columbus. Okay, so nice. uh, very, very good for travel. <laughs> yeah. No, um, you know, I just got back from a trip and I went to uh, uh, Colorado, Montana, Oregon, uh -huh. California, and I drove. So That's I'm nice. Retired, so why not? You know, see yeah, the country. I was married. Those are the good old days. Right. So, progressive field, does that count twice? Once for the Indians and once for the Guardians? Oh, of course not. No, uh, but I, I do, obviously, Cleveland Municipal Stadium and progressive field is two different parks. And I've been to three in Pittsburgh and three in Cincinnati. Wow. You've been to Forbes? Oh, yeah. Forbes oh, and uh, Carson Field also. So, yeah. if yeah. you had omnipotent power and could bring – one team slash park back for one day only that that you've seen that's gone who would it be that i've seen that's gone you know i would have to say probably cleveland cleveland municipal and also uh tiger stadium they were similar oh. and uh you know tiger with that um overhang in right field of the upper deck and uh you know it, it was just atmosphere i think we need to mark this down First time ever somebody said something nice about Cleveland Municipal Stadium. Yep. Put it on the calendar. Uh, well, I have, yeah. I've been there several times and um, not the best, but you know, when you're familiar with it and you're comfortable, it kind of becomes home. It's you know? home, right, right. No, you're absolutely right. You know, I, I had a chance to go to Cleveland Stadium in 1993 from New Jersey and I couldn't go and I wish I was able to do that. 1999, I had a chance to go to Tiger Stadium. And I said, no, let me go back to college and party with my friends. Still kicking myself for that. So two ballparks I had a chance to go to, and I screwed up. I'm the same way. I spent many Friday and Saturday nights partying with my friends. Yep. Where if I would have had this bug, I would have gone to, you know, Baltimore and, oh. uh, you know, Candlestick and some of the ones I missed out on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think all ballpark chasers have a few. We we look back and we're like, oh, how stupid, you know. What's your What's your biggest um biggest regret of uh, which one that you missed that you wish you could have gone there once? That's that's a very good question. I'm I, I would think maybe the Astrodome would have to be there, only mm -hmm. because of uniqueness, you know. Um, and then um, well. Evans Field, age-wise, I didn't really have the chance to go there, but, you know, everybody talked about it and, uh, you know, says it was a great time. So if I could go back in time, I'd like to do that one. Oh, yeah. Are you one of these people who, are uh, like, you're talking about Evans Field? You can go check out, like, historical markers of where Evans Field once was. When you're on your travels, do you things do things like that as well? Baseball and chasing no, activities? Not not really. I mean, I follow the people that do it on, on the ballpark chasers. I think it's cool, uh, you know, the old Ford Field wall. And I guess I was at the um, uh, Mall, of, Mall of America where they've got the Harmon Killebrew uh, seat, you know, on the wall there. But uh, I don't <laughs> – I, I kind of get a kick out of the people that even go to the grave sites and whatnot and all these uh, uh, cities of the old Hall of Famers and stuff, you know. I, I don't know. It, I don't really get too much of a kick out of seeing a, a grave marker, you know, with uh, somebody's name on it. So, it, yeah. everybody's, you know. 
Do you have any uh, groups where, like, you've seen an entire league, and that league is now gone? Oh, that's a good one. Um, well, now I went to the. Uh, there was a couple years back. They it was an independent league called the Expedition League. Take that back. Oh. It was college summer, and at oh. one time it started with eight, then it grew to ten, and I had seen all of them. Then it. The next year they went down and they broke up and I, I think they've only got three or four teams left. And yeah. I'm not even checking yeah, to was, see if yeah, it was seven, teams, seven teams left to form the Independence Baseball League, which is still around. Right. And then the Edition League was left with four teams and they wind up folding. A lot of right. drama. If if you look up some of the information, it's a good soap opera. It's I don't know if it was because uh, one guy owned all the teams and you know sometimes if the guy's got money that can be a good thing but then it can be a drawback too if you know he's struggling in three or four different places yeah but uh one nice thing about that league was when i went to uh minot north dakota um it was my 400th ballpark and uh they let me first pitch oh. and as i'm walking off the field the whole team from minot shook my hand you know because they they made an announcement that it was my 400th ballpark and you know that touched me it was yeah but that was a class move yeah now yeah now they're home to the minot hot tots yes yes the North if they North. don't change the ballparks they'll change their nickname in a hurry right mm -hmm. yeah yeah well that's great that they uh, honored you like that did they uh did they get a standing ovation i assume <laughs> yeah yeah it was you know i i it, I had done it at, uh, at my 300th ballpark also in Pittsfield, Mass. And it was a couple of years before. And, you know, there I tried to throw a strike. And I, I did pretty well for 59 wow. feet. And uh, and that time I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to lob it in. And, uh, you know, I'm not impressing anybody. So that's what I did. And, you know, it's like, who cares, right? Yeah. It, it either catch or catches it or it goes over the plate or it doesn't. Exactly. Uh, you were just talking about Pittsfield, Mass. Joe, have you heard of what's up with uh, Wakona Park right now? No, no. But you know what? After I'd been there, I didn't realize that Jim Bouton had wrote that book, and that was a very good read and interesting book. Yeah, uh, that um, that ballpark, Wakona Park, it's one of the oldest wooden grandstands still left in the country. It's actually been condemned. Oh, Ooh. that's so. They're trying to figure out how they can renovate it and restore it and keep it bring it up to code and uh, keep it going. But uh, they've actually had to take a week, uh, year off from the Futures League while mm -hmm. I try to get the ballpark straightened out. I don't know that. Somebody needs to contact Rob Manfred and see if they can't, you know, do what they did there at uh, Rickwood. And, it's, you know, just because it wasn't built in 1910 doesn't mean it's not still a gem, you know? Yeah, no, I was there about 20-some years ago. I saw the uh, Berkshire Black Bears managed by... George Scott, former major leaguer. That's who uh, Jim Bouton was involved with. I remember trying to get that yeah. team to, yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. He, I read, I remember, I read, I read that book as well. Not, not a bad idea, but I think the team was only there for a couple of years. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, it's a shame because you know I, I go to a lot of ballparks and I visit these stadiums like Fort Worth Cats. Did you get down to Legray Field at any time in your life? Um, no, that one I did not get to. Yeah. Like that's been sitting vacant for a decade and now they're knocking it down. And it's it's a uh, shame that they build these ballparks. And, and you know, uh, Pittsfield has been around for almost 100 years, if not more. But uh, some of these other ballparks, you know, 15 years. OK, done. Let's knock them down. Hmm. It, it breaks your heart. Camden, New York. What's amazing is when you hear that uh, the community or a group has raised money to um, renovate the park and you know a couple million dollars just doesn't go as far as it should you no. know no you're it's, shocked it's just like a couple coats of paint and boom you know yeah i mean like valley field in grand rapids there's a ballpark that's about 85 years old uh the amount of money they had to put into that from funds and state you know it's it, it was a long process but you know that's working out there how many other ballparks, you know, can use that right now as we speak? Yeah. So, all right, Joe. Here, I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, well, I, don't don't say it's, I think they're redoing the one in um, Michigan. Um, Hamtramck. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I don't know exactly where they're at with it. No, it's it's been refurbished. Yeah, it's completely refurbished. Done. Okay. Okay. But then there's no um uh team that calls it home as far as no. team to clean and those it's used for multiple levels of ball, correct? Yeah, it's used for amateur. There's not a fence around it. Uh, and I think one of the, I mean, one of the goals, there was talks about putting a Great Lakes League team in there, but. Uh, well, I think if I read right, um, there was a shoreline uh, summer league team that put one or two games there. That could be and the case was, too, yeah. yeah. And right. then some of that money came from Jack White from the uh, rock group, the White Stripes. Okay. The money. So, you know, some of these, hmm. some of these funds are coming from unexpected people. You know, well, I think, I've hit the entertainment music industry yeah. and the you know the ball players that maybe came from that area. Yep. <laughs> That's where the money is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you know, I was there when that place was boarded up and you know, in squalid condition. It's beautiful now. Mm. You know, it's a, one of the original Negro League stadiums, and it's great that you know people can go there and get a little history and you know, it has a story to tell still. Well, now, have, have any of you been to uh, Hinchliffe Stadium in Patterson? I, I've snuck into there. I have not been there since the re renovation. I was just there about a month ago, Joe. Yeah. Okay. Now, you read how much they put in there, yeah. and it's like, amazing, but it's kind of like, where did it all go? I mean, it's, you know, that, that's a lot of money. I mean, I guess that parking garage is included, and, you know, the... I had the museum section was not open uh, beyond center field. So that's another building, but uh, yeah, it's like, I guess we don't know a building cost like we do ticket prices. So yeah. yeah. Well, I, I like that. They, I, I, I love that they refurbished it. Cause I, I snuck in there a few times. And before or after Mark? This was before. Yeah. No, I, I haven't I saw been pictures of it before. Oh my God. Yeah, but before it was, I'm surprised somebody, some derelict wasn't in there with a bottle or, or you know, a needle. Uh, you took your life in your hands when you went in there, but I I like that. I, I don't know if it's, that's a great place to call a ballpark for a professional team. I just, I'm a little bit worried that it's yeah, not. The, you've got the parking garage, which I guess is good, but, you know, if you don't want, want that option, parking is limited. Um Really, the field design is okay. Plenty of seating, so yeah. you know that's not a problem. I I talked to the mayor, who uh, you know was involved with uh, raising that money, and I said, well, you know, you need to contact Major League Baseball see if they won't put a, a field of dreams game here or something, just to, you know, let everybody know about it and uh, you know try to get revenue. So, all right, I've got a question for you, Joe. Have you ever been? sitting in a bleacher somewhere and all of a sudden thought to yourself, what the hell am I doing here? Or have you ever um, like dri driving to some town way, way off the beaten path and thinking, what am I doing here with myself? Am I just uh, on a fool's errand here? Have you ever had those kind of thoughts? Yeah. Sometimes we think about, you know, the money, uh, a lot of times it's not the money, but the time involved in getting there. And then you get there and, you go, well, this is not anything more than a, a city park. I could have stayed home and, yeah. and watched, you know. <laughs> it's just, you know, they're, you have no uh, control over who plays in what league and where they play, and you just, you know, we follow the schedule. I'm with you there. I am with you there. there. A lot of times you look around and you go, well, this place has potential. It's a little paint here and some signs on the outfield fence, give this place a little color instead of just, you know, uh, the brown dirt, the green grass, and the whatever color the seats are bleachers, you know? So, so yeah, or if you're like my, my wife, sorry, Dave, um, you know, we've been to so many ballparks, she'll say, why don't they do this here? They, uh, she's always got a, some kind of ideas of how to improve the atmosphere or the, or the facilities. I mean, it's easy to spend other people's money, right? Absolutely. <laughs> That's some of my things, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, that out. Joe, what's the weirdest thing that you've ever seen at a ballpark? Or weird. Well, something it could be it Boston. could be like something in the game day promotions. It could be a feature of a stadium. Could be something 
a fan, whatever. Weirdest thing you saw at a ballpark? Something that just came to the top of my mind was uh, I was at a college game in uh, um, Virginia, Longwood University, I believe it's called. And they actually had uh, a robot, like the kind that you might use to mow your lawn or, or, or sweep your house. But it put the uh, batter's box lines and also the logo on the field. And it was controlled by an iPad. And, you know, it, it falls into the category of uh, you think you've seen everything and they just keep coming up with something new. And I asked the guy about it and he said, I, I think he said it was like $30,000 and, you know, money well spent. I'm not sure, but it was it was unique. But, um, wow, as far as promotions go, I don't know. I um uh, I was involved in a promotion at, uh, uh, in uh, the Lumber Kings in Iowa. And, uh, you know, do you want to play the air guitar? Well, my age, no. And they, uh, well, how about Cornell? Well, I could do that. So I did it, and I got one in, and I, I won a prize. And they said, well, we got a hat and a T-shirt. And I said, well, I just as soon have a beer if you've got one. <laughs> and they said, okay, we'll give you a big one. I said, even better. So <laughs> that was my prize for, you know. Uh, uh, getting uh, getting in the hole for cornhole. So Clinton Lover King it was. That's that's like the best prize I've ever heard of. <laughs> you know, why we're uh, uh, everybody's got ball hats. So who needs another one of those? So you know, Paul does. He needs another hat. You're the hat guy, Dave. <laughs> All right, there you go. That's a good question, Joe. Do you do you collect any kind of souvenirs or mementos from all these places you've been? I have kind of, uh, you know, obviously the baseballs has has become a thing here within the last four or five years. But uh, uh, I liked it when they still printed tickets. I collected those. Sure, shows you where you've been, what the date was, who they were playing, the name of the ballpark. Well, those are getting tough to get. But I, in my um, uh, <laughs> wondering mine a lot of times they'll say well what's a good phone phone number we can send that ticket to and i said oh i have a flip phone can you print it out for me and most times they will so you know uh <laughs> i've used that but um i started collecting um the koozies the bear koozies for a while well then you run into a couple places that don't have them and that kind of you know puts a monkey wrench into that plan so uh no nothing really uh you know, I know the major league parks, I was always collecting programs. And then you'd always, you know, try to get a, a souvenir cup, whether it was for uh, soda or beer or whatever. And uh, I kind of like those, uh, the beer bats that they have. I've only got one, but uh, they've, they've even changed those where they put like almost like uh, tape on the grips for the bat, you know. But uh, I, I'm reading that. How much people have to spend for those, you know, and obviously it's not, uh, not cheap. So and you I see you've got a good collection case. of uh, game balls behind you. Yes, I've, uh, you know, like I say, I've got, uh, 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 again, the fellow from Michigan, Ryan Eats, will help me out and supplied me with a lot of the um, the minor league balls, so the different, um, you know, Pacific Coast and uh, uh, intermediate and leagues like that, Texas League, and I had a few, but he, you know. He filled in holes for me, and now we uh, we kind of work as a tandem uh, when we go to ballparks and um, uh, like the college D ones. We run into the the conference balls, but also there's probably as we can figure, maybe 15 to 20 percent have college local balls. In other words, Indiana, Michigan, uh, Iowa from the Big Ten, they have their their school logo on there. And when you run into those, you know, it's nice to uh, click one of those. So we'll we'll grab a couple and swap them. And so, you know, made a nice uh, hobby to click those. So. How many how many foul balls have you got? Uh, that's that's a good question. You know, I've I've caught a few on the bounce on the fly, but that's another thing. It's kind of become part of my routine is positioning myself at a ballpark to where, you know, the foul balls will come and then being able to a lot of times talk to an usher and go in and go out and see where they, you know, I've gotten home run balls and stuff. So that's always on my mind uh, if I need that ball or, you know, I use it to, uh, uh, to trade. Um, <laughs> there's, <laughs> you learn the tricks of the trade, you know, it's just experience. Uh, let's say you're at uh, 
an ACC ball game and you need an ACC ball. And, uh, you know, you get one, a lot of times the players will run out and get them. Well, you just put one in your pocket from another conference and flip them the ball. They don't look at it. So, you know, then you got your ACC ball. It's just, and you're not giving them a ball out of the, out of the gutter that your dog chewed on. You're giving them another ball that you got at a, at another conference. We, we did that at Eastern Michigan and they had a nice, uh, green, uh, English style E on their ball. And we, we flipped them a, a, an ACC ball and a guy looked at it and says, hey, this is ACC. And I said, well, I thought you were in the MAC. <laughs> and he just walked away and went back. You know? <laughs> See, that's what you got to do up here if you go to inter-county because they they always have the announcement at inter-county games. Uh, baseball, foul balls are the property of the Kitchener Panthers and must be returned to the concession stand. <laughs> Oh, no kidding. Okay. Well, that's, you know, hey, a foul ball is a foul ball. You know, I've been to games where I gave them a ball from another conference, and I got that same foul ball back. <laughs> well, they're going to get it back soon. You know? <laughs> well, you know, what what they... is that happening? So they, they put it in play, and I put it back in play. <laughs> so. Up here, up here, they usually trade the foul ball for a freezy because it, you know, yeah. the kids will go run for them, or so you can go and take it to the concession stand. They'll give you a freezy. Yeah, that's nice. But I tell you, I, I, I was so embarrassed to be a Big Ten fan because I was at Purdue, and a little kid got a foul ball, and this um, supervisor kind of walked him over to the table, and they actually gave him a sticker. And I told the kids, Dad, you know what? If I want a sticker, I'll go vote or go to the dentist. I said, I'm not going to give them a ball to get a sticker. I'm just going to say, no, I'd rather keep it. And a lot of times, yeah. they'll give it back. Uh, but I've never had the situation where they're going to remove you from the game if you refuse, you know. Just give them some sort of story. Hey, I need this ball. I came all the way from Ohio. Can I keep it, you know? So they usually work with you. Yeah, stickers are popular now with uh, millennials. They <laughs> stick right. like I have to make you know. I think you know Stadium Journey. If if they could make release more stickers, you would be surprised how many people would want them to put them on their uh, you know Chromebooks and whatnot. What well, have you been to a game where um, there's a couple ballpark chasers? I think and uh, who was the the ball player they called the Stork? Played for the Mets. Um, oh, uh, G- George. Theodore? Theodore or Theodore or something like that. Well, there's like a sticker of his with number 11, and I've seen it on seats before at different parks, and I think they've kind of made a a game out of it where they just take one along with them and put it on a, a box seat somewhere behind home plate that, you know, it says the stork on there or whatever, and, you know, see how many ballparks they can get that sticker in. Okay, I have to look for that. I've never noticed that, but I, it's kind of cool to know if I happen to bump into that. So there's a sticker of George Theodore who played many years ago with the Mets. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know how that started or who's doing it. Uh, but I've seen a few of the chasers uh, comment on that, that they, you know, put put a sticker on a seat somewhere, you know. So, so do you have any uh, favorites outside of the uh, U.S. of A.? Uh, no, in fact, I've, I've been to a handful in Canada, you know, obviously uh, Olympic Stadium, Montreal, and then uh, the Rogers Center. But, uh, you know, as far as a uh, uh, few independents, but uh, I'm not, you know, I kind of envy some of those guys that go to England and some of those games. And, you know, I guess I'd like to, but I'm not sure I want to, you know, for just one game go into the expense of spending whatever it costs to, you know, to get there. Yeah. It's amazing. I, there's a a Paul Caputo, I think went to London to see the Mets and Phillies. And I I don't know, it must be nice to just say, Hey, I'm going to London to see a baseball game, I guess. uh, Well, I suppose if you look at it as a one-time thing, you know, like uh, the ballpark chaser, Scott Freer, um, he plays the bugle at the the Jackals, New Jersey Jackals. And we know and that with his wife. And I told him, you know, I'm envious, you know. And he, I said, you went big time on me, you know. So yeah. Well, flights uh, from New York City are not. I, I, 
If you live in New York or Boston, I, I would assume the flights to London are not terrible. You could take mass transportation. You just spend an arm and a leg on a hotel and, and you're fine. Because I was just talking to a guy the other day. London is just one of the most expensive cities you can ever visit. And uh, my grandfather said that, and he was there back in the 1930s. So things haven't changed there. So, you know, at the time the Mets were playing bad, I said, I can see the Mets play here in the States or Cincinnati or Chicago to lose. I don't need to go to, to London, but it's, they wind up winning. Well, I started my major league journeys like in 1998, and I'm really thankful that I started it that soon because, you know, at that time it was still affordable. And now, yes. you know, a family to the major league game, and it's like what going on a week's vacation used to be. It's just mm -hmm. it's yeah. a major no, I, Yeah, I got back from Milwaukee, and if you prepay, you can get, you know, maybe $15 parking, but – I think it was between 25 and 40 on Sundays. Beers were between 12 and $14. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's expensive for one person to go to a game. You know, I remember getting a $6 ticket to the vet or $7 game to Shea Stadium. I think bucks. that's why I see so many guys, for example, they'll go with a buddy. Uh, you know, sometimes they, they'll go with their wife, but the kids stay at home. Uh, a lot of times you'll see the the wife, they go with girlfriends, so they only have to pay for one ticket instead of, you know, family of four or six or however, however many is in the family. So, yeah. no, it's, it's pricey. It's pricey. Some like Cincinnati to go to a Reds game is still pretty affordable. Uh, but yeah, a lot like you know, Wrigley Field, Comiskey Park, even, you know, and, and there's, you know, and I hate when they price gouge you. I had a friend up here from Costa Rica, him and his wife wanted to go see the Cubs. We were going to buy tickets on, on uh, SeatGeek or Ticketmaster. It was 50 bucks plus $23 per ticket service fee. Yeah, that's what pisses me off. $23 yeah. for all for each ticket plus $2 for something else. We wind up that's going true. to a Chicago Dogs game. It was like $9 a ticket, $3 to park. They had a $2 beers. They had a blast. They had a blast up there in Rosemont, so. It's it's price you know, customers. It's insane. I don't care if you're playing the Cardinals or the Yankees. You shouldn't be charging twenty three dollars. I guess that's Ticketmaster, but well, when you think about it, it's just a regular season game, and there's one hundred sixty two of it. So what makes that game, you know, special? Yeah, only the fact that you're there. You know? Yeah, someday if you're there on a Tuesday watching the Cubs versus the Tampa Bay Rays in the afternoon, you're going to pay what ten bucks for a ticket. If it's the Cardinals on a Friday afternoon, yeah, you're going to be paying fifty. Yeah, it's I, I hate it. I, I just I hate ticket prices. My attitude is I pay, you know, e either either if you're going to charge me a lot for the tickets, charge me less for the food, or vice versa. Char yeah, there's so much well, profit on that. You know, what like, a terrible businessman you'd make. I would. <laughs> yes, that's why well, I don't want to. If I own a baseball team, it probably would be in the Great Lakes League. I wouldn't make any money, but my my team would survive and. And I would be you'd doing have, a, a you'd have fun. service to uh, my community. <laughs> you 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 know it would help, Mark. What's that? Stop going. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I know, I know, I know. It's an impossible. I I know it's an impossible task, but you know, that's and, a lot of money. And they have people stop going to many baseball teams, and those teams have folded and ceased operations. Joe, um, have you ever kept track of all your travels of how much money has gone towards baseball stadiums? No, I haven't, and I'm glad I haven't. Because it would, <laughs> yeah, it would probably, I would probably have second thoughts because you know I'm not I'm not a um, a high comfortability type person. You know, I, I, I'm not afraid to say that I stay at Motel Six. You know, I hey, if they have a bed and a shower, that's all I'm asking for. You know, uh, cleanliness is nice. But it's not, you know, I don't give it the white glove treatment, but uh, I have pretty good luck, you know, staying there. So um, I, I try to keep the prices down. I'll buy a general admission, standing room only, or whatever the cheapest is, because I like to observe and roam the stadium. Uh, I rarely sit. I just want to, you know, be on my feet after all that driving and, you know, experience it that way. Do you have any desire to do? 
like I remember we were talking about traveling and and uh, I think you're referring to some of the one offs, like, you know, London or Australia or whatever. But do you have any desire to do like a big tour of, let's say, like Japan or Korea, do a whole whack of um, professional ballparks in, in one foul swoop? Not at this point. You know, I, I suppose if the opportunity was there or. You know, let's say if if a team in Japan were entered the major league, so that would give me a reason to. But uh, you know, you talk about the logistics. <laughs> my my uh, my trips are very simple to plan. You know, you get on the internet and then a three thirty game. Okay, I can make that one, and I might even yeah. be able to make the seven o'clock game that's an hour or two away. You know, so. But over there, <laughs> I hated the last time I went to uh, Canada. Because everybody was speaking French, and I just felt like such a uh, an outsider and a foreigner. And I went to a grocery store to pick up a few items, and the lady put down uh, the, the bar across there. And of course, it was in French, and I guess it said this lane is closed. And I thought she was just putting a separation between my groceries and the next guy. And <laughs> I learned in a hurry, but she, since I only had a couple of items, she took one more person, you know. So. Yeah. Well, I assume like this was in Mont Montreal, correct? Oh uh, no, it was actually um, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, Three Rivers. Yeah, Trois Rivières, Trois Rivières, or, -Rivière yeah. or yeah. Quebec City. Quebec. Yes, it, I had. I made a three uh, three ballpark trip on that one to finish up the three in the K and M that I hadn't been to. So, but uh, yeah, it was uh, you know, it, it's just weird the. Uh, I mean, I, I got along pretty well because they speak both English and French. But, you know, when all you hear is French, you just, it just makes you feel like a foreigner. And you are, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you are a foreigner. You are a foreigner. I thought I spoke French until I went up there last summer, Joe, so I can sympathize with you. Um, no, yeah. well, the, the, the funny thing is in Montreal, they'll speak French to you, and then you start speaking English. And it's like, okay, I know you know how to speak English, guys, so. Yeah, Actually, the, it's it's really easy. All you have to do is attempt to speak French, and then they'll start speaking English. To okay, you. so kind of like when you start speak Spanish somewhere. Oh, they'll okay, they'll it. they'll know. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. what terrible French you've got. Okay, I'll help you out here. Toronto. <laughs> All right, Joe. Um, so uh, 775 ballparks. Do you have an ultimate goal? Are you looking to get to a thousand? Are there? Oh point? yeah. A thousand is definitely goal of mine right now. Um. I don't know. Uh, I would say that's probably going to, you know, I'm I'm approaching 70 in October, so I don't know how long this is going to last. But uh, you know, I don't. Health is 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 pretty good, but nothing's holding me back right now, other than the, maybe the 180,000 miles I got in my car. So I I, I don't need to uh, trade that one in and start over on that regard. Oh, but uh, thank you. You should be good to go. that was going to be one of my questions: how many miles are on your car? <laughs> And it's only six years old, so it goes to show you that. See, see, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm pushing fifty, so I'm looking at my car. It's got about eighty six thousand. My last car had two hundred two thousand. I was coming back from Wrigley Field with it, so you okay, know, this, me... this is the first car I've ever put a hundred thousand miles on. So it's kind of that was kind of a unique thing, yeah. you know. But I, I'm not sure I want to get to three hundred thousand on this thing. Two, well, yeah, two. So as long as you maintain your oil changes and get them checked up, you, you'll be fine. My mother lost cars at two hundred seventeen thousand. Wow. Well, I'm I am using the the high mileage oils. Yeah. So yep. you have to. Have to oil we had a truck that topped out at two ninety three uh, for something, and then uh, one day driving down the street, in the middle of July, I heard a thump. Yeah. And I opened the just door. disintegrated. <laughs> I opened the door and all the smoke, like there was no smoke until I stopped, opened the door. It just started pouring in. And it was the, uh, excuse me, I was about to say radiator. It was the radiator mm -hmm. and the water pump. And they were like, we would like a couple, we would like a 15. And we were like, no, <laughs> it's, a, it's a, you can have that. <laughs> it's, it's over. So I, we almost made 300. Almost. That's, that's, that's good. <laughs> Did you donate it to cars for kids or what happened to it? It was, I, I don't remember the actual donation. It was donated. Yes. 
we we had it up on a uh, we have we had it in the parking lot for a week, so we both stared at it. And it's sad because it was Kelly's my wife's first car, lasted okay. that long, and uh, that went back and forth with her to Virginia Tech when she went to school and back, and countless of hockey arenas, uh, and of course I killed it. Uh, I didn't really. It was just driving up a hill, and it was like you happened ah! to me. Yeah. Well, what year I was, was your driving. first ballpark, Joe? Sorry, Dave. I'm I'm Dan. Dan, <laughs> say that what year now. What year was your first? I just something I was going to ask you early. What was what year was your first baseball stadium, and where was it? Was it Cleveland Municipal? My uh, my recollection um, doesn't remember um, Cleveland being the first one. It's actually Forbes Field, and I think that was about nineteen sixty or sixty one. Nice. So. Um, I, I re, you know, I have recollection of my dad taking me to Municipal Stadium, but um, I still kind of um, regret the fact that my brother got to go see Mickey Mantle play, and I was a year younger, and I didn't, I had to stay behind. So, um, I don't, you know, I think that would have been my first one, and that was probably 19... Uh, 58 or so, you know, I didn't, I was too young, didn't get to go. Uh, so, but yeah, I, I it really Forbes field is my first, uh, you know, cause like a lot of times when you're young, you, you don't remember all the details and take in everything. That's why when I started uh, doing the major league parks with my son, he was about 10 years old, uh, 12 years old, really when we started, which is a good age because they, they pick up things, you know, they remember things. And I think sometimes when people are, kids are four, five, and six, they just, you know, they remember being at a game, but they don't remember anything about it. Unless you take a lot of pictures and the parents keep reminding them, hey, remember that time we went and this happened and that happened and, you know. Are there, what ballparks, Joe, are on your uh, your to-do list as you approach uh, a thousand obviously i want to try to finish d1 um you know believe it or not i i have to renew my passport card because i haven't been to winnipeg yet in the indy league and then there's the inner county league in in canada that i want to get to because i think you know you could probably do is there six teams in that league eight maybe you could probably do them all in one trip and uh uh you know, other than that, I keep hearing about new ones. Obviously, the new ballpark in Hagerstown I want to get to. Um, the Coastal Plain League added a team in Greenville, uh, North Carolina. They're using an older ballpark that I haven't been to yet. So I keep jotting them down as I hear them so I don't have to trust my memory, you know. The good, the good thing about a quest like this is the, the goal line is always moving. We'll, we'll never get to the end of it. So that could be either a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, even like you, Paul, I mean, do you ever want to quit? Do you mean, uh, you know, there's no reason to let you want to start making, uh, uh, you know, basket weaving or, or take up golf, completely change gears, you know, you don't want the, the journey to end. So. No, as, as long as my health and my wallet allows, I'll be doing, I'll be chasing ballparks too. Yes. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So um, one last question, Joe, before we let you go because we're coming up on, on an hour here. Um, what advice would you give to someone who is just starting out chasing ballparks? Um, what's some, some tips, tips of the trade that, that you found over the years to make, uh, make the chase a little easier? Well, I think you learn as you go. You know, if you have a plan, like I think everybody's ultimate goal is to see all the major league ballparks. Now, you know, you hear so many people say, where should I sit? What should I eat? What should I do? You know, I would say, um, if you can work in um, other, like going to Alcatraz when you go to San Francisco, uh, seeing the Arch, obviously, in St. Louis, take a tour of the Budweiser factory, you know, different things like that along the way, which might um, uh, require that you take another day and spend another day in the city. That would be a good thing. But if your ultimate goal is just to see as many parts as you can, then work in the minor leagues with the majors, um, you know, work in the independence with those spring training and all, you know, just have a, have a plan. And, uh, um, you know, like as we go, we uh, want to do a certain area. We kind of pick out that 11 o'clock game and then work the schedule from there. 
you know, let's say that 11 o'clock game's on a Wednesday, and then we find we can make a six or seven o'clock game later that day, and then yeah. work back to a game on a Tuesday, and you know, try to maximize your your time in a certain area. Yeah, I think that I, I'm with you. That my advice to anyone is is you know, this has been for me at least such a great way to see the country, and so many things all in all these different places. Um, you know, don't shy away from taking a little time away from the ballpark to, to check out the different places you're going to. Right, and and pay attention to your road signs. Like I was, you know, near Keystone, South Dakota, and I had no idea that's where uh, Mount Rushmore was. But when you see it's 25 miles away, hey, I'm there, you know, and I'm glad I went there. And then I can't believe that uh, um, uh, Crazy Horse is so close to that, and it was yeah. two, years, two years later, that I actually went to Crazy Horse, and then you think, oh, well, it's got to be bigger, and they're still working on it, and no uh, U.S. funds, you know, they're, they're using their own uh, yeah. funds to build it, and it's, it's interesting, you know? I've been working on that for about, what, 75 years, correct? I don't think that's going to be done for our grandchildren, I don't think. <laughs> oh, Joe, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and uh, and sharing your travels with us. It's been a been a great time talking to you and swapping stories um if Thank any of our listeners go ahead oh, we, oh i didn't want to interrupt you um if any of our listeners want to follow your travels are you do you do anything online where they could kind of check out where you're going or where you've been uh i i am a, a member of ballpark chapters and uh i do post like uh where i i take you know half a dozen pictures or so try to get some unique pictures of where I'm going and, and just, you know, not necessarily try to give it the whole three paragraphs, but where it is, what city, what league. And then, you know, I always like to take a picture of a foul ball if I get one, just so they know, you know, what kind of ball they're using and what it has on there in case they might want to start a collection of their own. So. Well, all right. Well, Joe, Joe, it's been a pleasure. And thanks again for coming on and joining us tonight. Thank you again, guys. And good luck with all of you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. That, that's amazing. That that number staggers me, 775 ballparks. Well, he had about a 20-year head start from, from me. <laughs> not, <laughs> not on me. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> I, but, yeah, there, I there's know, a retirement I, goal. Retirement goal for me, I guess. I think you should start checking out, like, you know, your nephew's t-ball game. Like, I don't even know how there's 900 yeah. ballparks to go to. But well, you figure, to... you figure a hundred in, um, like he said, it used to be 160 minor league parks, um, independent parks. You can add another hundred, 300 D one, 300 D two. There's gotta be like two or 3000 summer college league games parks at this point. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it can add up pretty quickly. Community college. I never consider that, but I've been to You're a couple your rules, right? Yeah. All right. So uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, for joining us today. Um, Dan, where can our listeners follow your online adventures? Dan Law 83. And uh, okay, I think make that hard. That's it. Yeah, I, I think for the restaurants, I think we all have uh, trips coming up. So, uh, Mark, where are you heading on the road this next couple of weeks and where can our listeners follow you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm heading to Costa Rica tomorrow via Houston. So I will be watching uh, a soccer game, the Super Classic, Saprissa versus uh, Heredia. That's a soccer match. And then there is a baseball stadium in Costa Rica. Uh, I don't know who plays there. I don't think they have a team, but I'm going to check it out, see what the heck's going on there. So that that's going to be me for the next 10 days. So it's it's not going to be a lot of baseball. It's just going to be me with spending time with my dad and, and nice. doing some other things. So. Nice. Well, enjoy yeah. your trip, Mark. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Dave, where can our uh, listeners follow you? And where are you heading? I know part of it. Uh, Twitter and Instagram at Profan9 and uh, also uh, YouTube. Uh, you can check out my appearance on the Locked on Jets podcast, which was kind of fun. Where we That was excellent. I listened to it. It was very oh, good. Thank you. We talked about the uh, away... Um, the away schedule for the Jets and uh, got a lot of help and, and talked about uh, Tottenham after talking to Richard uh, and, and I sounded like I knew what I was talking about, but I really had no clue. So no, I could tell cause you did a lot of ums and uh, you know, I always do ums. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, and it is convention time. So I'm heading out for convention on Wednesday. Uh, I'm the way I'm stopping to see the Reading fighting fills. Nice. Uh, then our convention uh, group. So York Revolution, Aberdeen Ironbirds, Washington Mystics. Uh, I'm taking the extra trip to see the Baltimore Orioles, who are disgustingly good this year. Holy crow. They're in second place, though. And uh, Bethesda Big Train. And then after that, I'm hoping to get some well and jackfish and round out uh, some junior lacrosse as playoffs are coming in. So uh, Brampton Excelsiors. So that's a pretty busy time. So check it all out at Profan9. All right, and uh, as for me, Twitter and Instagram, at PuckmanRI, and I, too, will be heading down to the D.C. area for the Stadium Journey get-together. So, like Dave said, uh, I won't be doing York. Uh, I can't leave till the next day, so I'll be joining the crew in Aberdeen and then the Mystics and the Orioles and the Bethesda Big Train. And from there, uh, we're heading off to parts unknown, well, at least unknown for us. We're going to do our <laughs> annual ballpark trip. Uh, Monday will be in Asheville, North Carolina. Nice. Tuesday will be in Memphis. Wednesday we will be in Little Rock, then Nashville, then Charleston, West Virginia to see the Dirty Birds, then uh, the new ballpark in Hagerstown, and the original plan was to see the Yankees and Red Sox to cap off the trip, but Major League Baseball did us dirty and moved that game to 7.30 at night, so uh, we ha- we're going to play it by ear for the last day. Uh, right now it looks like the Connecticut Sun. To At least they didn't move it to 11.30 in the morning. That would have been okay. Yeah. I, I, it is too early for baseball. How about yeah. the Jersey Shore Blue Claws? Are they playing? Uh, no, but that's kind of the wrong direction because okay. we both have to work on Monday, so we gotta we got to be back at a reasonable hour on Sunday. That's why uh, the that's Yankees-Red Sox games wouldn't work. We wouldn't get back till 2 a.m. if we stayed for the night game because oh. yeah. New York's a good three hours away from us. And uh, the trip's kind of got a – it's. Got a nice highlight because Pam will be hitting her 200th ballpark on this trip. Cool. So we're talking about numbers. She's She's got a milestone coming up. And uh, like I said, uh, at Puckman RI. Uh, remember, you can find all of our stadium reviews, news items, and other feature stories on the website, stadiumjourney.com. Connect with us on all our social media channels at Stadium Journey. You can find uh, ver- audio versions of the Stadium Journey podcast by searching HIAC Talk Radio Network wherever you look for your favorite podcasts. And if you prefer video simulcasts of our podcast, just go to our YouTube page. And our live streams, if you want to be part of our live studio audience, Dan Law's Media, Vast Media Empire. We record every other Monday night at 7. Go to Dan Law 83 and you can find the links. We'll be back in two weeks. That'll be July 8th, if I'm reading the calendar correctly. Uh, We're going to recap all our trips. So hopefully... uh, Mark will have some Costa Rican adventures, and Dave and I will be uh, crisscrossing the continent. So, as always, uh, we want to thank Joe again for joining us tonight, and thank everyone else for your support. For Dan, Mark, and Dave, this is Paul wishing you all safe journeys and close games. Mm-hmm.